Hello everyone, in this video we're going to be solving a radical equation. If you like this video, hit the thumbs up button, also comment and subscribe, and let's get started. So I'll be presenting two methods here, first the cooler one. We're going to check the domain of this function. Okay, let's go ahead and do that. So for example, here we have square root of x, which means x needs to be greater than or equal to zero. And this implies that x needs to be less than or equal to one. How about the third one? Okay, if you check the third one, the third radical is gonna give you something like this. We need that x minus the square root of one minus x greater than or equal to zero. And this can be written in you know different ways, but let's go ahead and write it like this. x is greater than or equal to one minus x. Now, one of the things that we're gonna talk about here is can x equal zero or one? We can easily check it out. If you go ahead and replace x with zero and you get the following equation. So you'll get zero plus the square root of zero minus one because one minus zero is equal to one and the square root is one. And is this equal to one? Question mark. Well, not because square root of negative one is not even a real number. So x equals zero obviously is not a solution of this equation. Okay, let's go ahead and check if x equals one is a solution. If you substitute, you get one plus the square root of one minus zero. And obviously one does not equal two. So x equals one is not a solution either. Now, why did I check these? Well, because we do have two inequalities here that are not strict but apparently they need to be strict because zero and one will not satisfy. So that tells me that X needs to be greater than zero and less than one. Therefore, we can safely say that X needs to be between zero and one. So when I find my solutions, I'm gonna make sure that they satisfy this inequality right here. But we have more information than that because take a look at this one. Well, this tells you that Square root of one minus X, I can write it in a different way, is less than or equal to X. But here's the question. Can square root of one minus X equal X, right? Okay, how is that possible? Well, if you go ahead and check that out, if square root of one minus X is equal to X, that implies that this expression here is zero, but it's impossible because X cannot equal one. So this is not gonna work either, which means that the correct inequality for this one is the strict inequality, which is, square root of one minus X is less than X, okay? Now, if you put this all together, this one and this one, what are we getting? Let's go ahead and check that out. Okay, so I can basically write this as a chain of inequalities and it looks like the following. I can start with zero here and then zero is less than square root of one minus X, obviously. And why does this need to be satisfied? Because you know, the radical expression is always greater than or equal to zero, but it can't equal zero because X cannot equal one. So this is true. And we also know that this is less than X and we know that X is less than one. So we can basically write the following. Now, having said that, let's go ahead and write down our original equation one more time. And what we're gonna do is we're going to pair it up with something nice and then that'll be our first solution method. Okay, so my original problem is the square root of X plus the square root of X minus the square root of one minus X is equal to one. And now what I'd like to do is, I'd like to pair this with its conjugate. And it looks like the following, square root of x minus the square root of x minus the square root of one minus x. And since I don't know what this equals because I don't even have the value for x, I'll just set it equal to y. And what am I gonna do with these two conjugates, right? Well, I would like to multiply them together because if you multiply two conjugates, you're gonna get something nice, right? Let's go ahead and do it. So if you multiply these two expressions, if you call this A and if you call the second one B, if you multiply A plus B times A minus B from difference of two squares, you're gonna get A squared minus B squared. And that should look like the following, X minus the quantity X minus the square root of one minus X. And obviously I call the second expression Y here, right? So their product is going to be one times Y, which is equal to Y. Now, when you subtract and simplify the X, you're gonna get the following result, which is kind of nice. The square root of one minus X is equal to Y. Okay, so this is cool, but we need to make it cooler. So let's go ahead and now add these two equations. And what happens if I add them? You know, the second one cancels out and we get, let me write it in a different color. So when we add those two equations, we get 
2 times the square root of x is equal to y plus 1. But I know that y is equal to square root of 1 minus x, so I can just go ahead and replace that, and this is what I will be getting. Okay, cool. Now, so I get a radical equation from here, which we can solve, but we're going to solve it in an interesting way again. What I'd like to do is I'd like to put these two things together, right? So let me go ahead and subtract and put all the radicals on the same side because I'll use my conjuga conjugates again. How? Well, you know that this pairs up nicely with another expression like this one. And it's the 2 times the square root of x plus the square root of 1 minus x. And since I don't know what it equals, I'll call that z because we already used y. Now, I'll pretty much do the same thing here. Let's go ahead and multiply these two together. And it's going to give me from difference of two squares, 4x minus square root of 1 minus x squared, which is 1 minus x. And the product is going to be z because 1 times z equals z. Now, if you simplify this expression, you should be getting 5x minus 1 is equal to z. All right? Cool. Now, if you add these equations now, just like before, we got rid of the, we'll get rid of the second one. And this gives us 4 times, maybe I'll change the color here. All right. Let's go ahead and use this one. So if I add them, I should be getting 4 root x equals z plus 1. Notice that I can write z plus 1 from here as 5x. So 5x is equal to z plus 1. And I can just go ahead and substitute that here. Then I should be getting something much simpler. So the conclusion is we get a radical equation, but it's much simpler. And it looks like the following. 5x is equal to 4 times the square root of x. And obviously, in this case, we can go ahead and square both sides, right? But we'll always pay attention to the domain. And the domain was, remember, x needs to be between 0 and 1. And if I square both sides, I should be getting 25x squared is equal to 16x. Since x does not equal 0, I can go ahead and divide both sides by x. And this should give me 25x equals 16. And if I divide both sides by 25, I should be getting from here x equals 16 over 25. And this should satisfy the equation because it meets the domain criteria. Cool. Now, here's the second solution method. Let's go ahead and talk about that. The second method basically involves the usual squaring both sides. Okay, let's go ahead and do it though. It's kind of interesting how it turns out. So our original problem says the square root of x plus the square root of x minus the square root of 1 minus x is equal to 1, all right? And what, what I'm going to do here is I'll isolate the radical on the left-hand side. So one of the radicals is going to stay on the left. And I'll put the other radical on the right-hand side like this. And then I'll square both sides. Of course, that's what we usually do, right, with radicals. So let's go ahead and square both sides here and see what happens. Notice that I haven't paid attention to the domain here because I'll check my solutions at the end. So if you square both sides, the radical is going to cancel out. So we're going to get x minus the square root of 1 minus x is equal to... So this is kind of like an a minus b squared, which is 1 minus 2 root x plus x. Notice that the x cancels out, so we can get rid of that. And now, what we can do is we can actually put the radicals on the same side or switch sides, but I don't want to do any of that. I just like to square both sides again. Let's do it. But no, don't forget to square the minus sign. Well, actually, it's not going to make a difference, so never mind. If you do square it, though, it's going to become positive, so we'll get 1 minus x from the left-hand side. And the right-hand side is, again, a minus b quantity squared, so you can write it as 1 minus 4 root x plus, if you square 2 root x, you're, you're going to get 4x. Awesome. Again, 1 cancels out, and we can just go ahead and put the x's on the same side. If you want to make everything positive, you can just go ahead and switch sides here and write it as 5x is equal to 4 root x. And this brings us pretty much to the same point. And if you square both sides again, right, if you square both sides, then you should be getting the same thing, which is 25x squared is equal to 16x. And then, of course, x does not equal 0. So we can divide both sides by x, simplify this, and this should give me 25x is equal to 16. And finally, divide by 25, and you should be getting x equals 16 over 25. And this brings us to the end of this video. Well, thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed the video. Tomorrow, I'll see you with another video. At the same time, until then, be safe, take care, and bye-bye.